is the user guide for the CQ50 series 650. Uh, this guide will also be useful for the 450 and the 250. Uh, the 450 and the 250 may lack a few of the buttons that you find on the 650, um, but in general the phones will function the exact same. So a few things just looking at your overall screen. Uh, these will be considered your BLF keys or your soft keys. You can I mean uh, line keys. You can change those. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you know, simply pressing the menu will take you into various options. This is where you can find your Wi-Fi setup. If you, if you happen to be using Wi-Fi uh, and it loses connections, you can find that under the settings option. Use your dial pad to find there. And then under the basic settings, press the check mark. And then down at the bottom, number eight is the Wi-Fi. That's also where you're gonna find your Bluetooth setup. Uh, if you happen to be using a Bluetooth headset on the phone, uh, this is where you would pair that. Uh, you know, speak to your CQ uh, dealer as to which Bluetooth headsets are, are appropriate for the phone. Uh, the majority of them, there's a USB port on the top. Uh, the majority of those can be plugged uh, into the USB port for charging, which is pretty helpful. Uh, talking through the rest of the buttons here, obviously you've got your dial pad, you've got your volume control. And now this is going to, based on what you're doing on the phone, uh, if you're just, you know, you're idle, simply changing this will change the ring volume. If you're speaking to someone, changing this will change the volume uh, on your phone call. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, you've got a speaker, so that automatically puts it in speaker mode. You can dial and hit send and the call will begin. You've got mute, uh, pressing that during a call will uh, mute your phone call. You've got your headset button, uh, that's if you're using say a wired headset. Uh, you can press that button and the call will go to your headset as opposed to the speaker uh, or the handset. You've got a voicemail key. Uh, that should be set up to automatically connect to your voicemail. Uh, that will flash uh, if you've got a voicemail, as will this right here, uh, indicating that uh, you've got a new message. Simply pressing that key. Uh, it may or may not ask you for your password. Uh, that would be depending on how your system was programmed. This is the redial key. Uh, this is a transfer key. You also have a transfer key on the screen. We'll show you that in just a second. This is the hold key. Uh, the difference here between hold um, on this new IP systems and the old one is when you put a call on hold on your phone, only your phone can pick up that call again. Uh, you'll see a button on your screen that says resume. Uh, simply pressing that will you know, bring the caller off hold. Again, they'll be hearing music the whole time. Um, but if you put a call on hold, no other phone can pick up that caller, which is a little bit different than previous models. Uh, this is the conference button. Uh, pressing that allows you to call another party and conference them into the person you're already speaking with. Uh, let me show you some of the options when, you, when a call comes into the phone. Uh, first of all, you're going to notice that there is going to be a... Right, so in comes a call. You can answer it. You can forward it. You can silence. You can reject it. Now, if you want to put this on hold, right, that caller is hearing. You can see it's visibly on the screen here. Uh, then if you want to resume it, simply resume. If you want someone else to have that call, say you want that to go to Jared, all you have to do is press Jared's key and that call is going to go directly to Jared. Right? You now see his button is flashing red and his phone is ringing. I'm going to hang up before he answers. If I call in again, let me show you the feature of Park. Park is useful because other people can pick up the call now. So you can see I've got a button here that says park. I'm going to press that key. Trend seven, one. And you hear it said 71. So you can see a few things. You've got a key up here, lot 71 is red. That means someone is parked in that parking lot. Anyone with that key on your system can press it and they will be speaking to that person. So if I press it, I have basically picked up that caller from park. Any, any user on your system could have done that. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to call back in. Let me show you a new option on the system. I'm going to park the call again. Just press it once. Trend seven, one. Another way to pick up that call is just to dial 71 and talk to that person. Um, the other way, notice you've got a button here that says lots. Uh, it doesn't have to be called lots, but this is a new feature on the system. If you press that, it's going to show you the caller ID of the person on park and how long they've been on park for, uh, which is pretty useful just to make sure you're picking up the right caller. Uh, if you've got you know three, four, or five people parked, you simply scroll to the person you want and hit pick up, and now you're talking to that person again. 
uh, a new feature on this system uh, that um, may or may not be present on your phones. A lot of it depends on how your phones were programmed and the system was programmed, is the ability to transfer to a user uh, and have their phone ring or have the transfer and go directly to voicemail. So if I call in again, and let's just say I wanted to send this call to Jared. I've already demonstrated that simply pressing Jared's key, um, this call will be directly transferred to Jared. His phone will ring. If he doesn't pick up, it's going to go to voicemail. But let's just say I want to send a call just to Jared's voicemail. What I can do here is a long hold. And once again, this does determine that your system is set up correctly by your programmer. If I press and hold, You could hear there that I heard Jared's voicemail message. Uh, he has not recorded a new one, but that was his default message. So a short press is going to send you directly to Jared's phone. A long press is going to send you to Jared's voicemail. And once again, that is based on uh, the programming that you have on your system. So that may not be a default setting yet for you, uh, but you certainly could request it. Uh, a few signals I wanted to walk you through here. If I call in, let's just say a call comes in and I reject it, you're gonna see I'm gonna see a missed call. I'm gonna see a phone with a red X at the top blinking, and I'm gonna say you know, the missed call down at the bottom here. Uh, one way you can get rid of that is simply pressing history. You can see your missed calls and you can sort by all calls, and then if you hit back, that is now gone. You also can ask your programmer to take that warning off if you do not wanna see uh, missed calls. Some people don't like that. Uh, the other things on the phone, just simply uh, how to find the IP or how to find um, the firmware, all you have to do is press the check mark twice. That's going to tell you your IP of your phone. In this case, it's 192.168.1.106. Sometimes your programmer will need that. This is also going to show you your MAC address. And uh, the firmware is also going to be indicated here. All these things are questions that your programmer may require or may ask of you. Uh, this is also one way to access your phone. If you go to a browser and you type in 192.168.1.106, just as if you were typing in yahoo.com and hit enter, it will take you to a login screen for your phone. Um, and your programmer can provide you the password to access that. Uh, there you can change buttons, uh, time zones, preferences, pictures. Uh, but keep in mind there's a chance that your phone is connected to the phone system with a template. So if you are making changes, there's a chance that uh, those changes will be reverted back to the template. Um, once again, if you ask your programmer to, to allow you to make personal changes, they can make a change to allow your changes to stick. Simply pressing twice backwards uh, takes you back to your phone. The last thing I wanted to show you was, was simply making a phone call. If I type in a phone number, it, it's going to sit here for a while until it times out. Um, and some people get confused by that. One thing you can do to, to actually initiate the calls, press send. Another thing you can do is press pound. That's going to send the call. I didn't dial the whole number there. Uh, the other thing you can do is simply pick up the handset. All of those are ways to initiate a phone call um, as opposed to just letting the number sit on the screen. Uh, there's a wide variety of other features, but that is the standard user practice for the CQ650. You will find that applicable as well to the 450 and the 250.